created that empty farm. You can see there are no applications on there. So there is actually a utility that I like to use. And let's go back to the uh, first test server. And something written by Jason Conger. And it's just a couple of files. You actually only need to run the exe to be totally honest, unless you're actually on a workstation. Actually, just before I do that, I'll just show you the other file. So you can actually run that from a workstation because that'll give you the SDK kit. You need to run the MetaFrame. There's some other little thing. It's just a little bit complicated. Just run the XC from a one of the servers because then that'll give you the because the MFCOM service is actually running uh, on the server. It'll all work. Now the trick here is to connect to both farms, and instead of connecting to the farm name, you just need to. This will be my production uh, farm where I'll have all the applications and you can see it's retrieving the applications from the uh, Zen farm. Beautiful. And so I'll just have a quick look. Right. Now the next thing which is unusual is you then, the newly created test farm, you need to create, connect to a server in that and of course that is the one where there are no applications right so I've got to be careful here I can't just normally I just drag and drop them so the whole lot but I've got actually no, no real applications on this test box uh, so I know I can probably drag that one and that's an Excel that's Excel that's Excel that's video and that's Word so I can probably just do that one applications and it appears and let me just go to my you can see at the moment there are no applications in the test farm as you can it's appeared already so uh, yeah that's great normally you have to do a discovery but no it's, it's appeared there it's disabled um, interesting I'm quite sure why it's I don't know why I double clicked on there let's just go into properties and there may be a reason that was disabled Perhaps the location. The location is on a network drive, so uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure why it's disabled. Um, ah, no servers are selected. Okay, yeah, well that's that's fair enough, isn't it? Do you want to continue? No. Okay, so you normally then, um, obviously it's coming from the other farm, and the servers are different names, so you can't import those. Yeah, yeah, I knew that. So let's just give it a, uh, let's add all of them, and that's why it was disabled. Great. So we should see that disappear. Uh, let's just do another discovery. Oh, let's just do another discovery. And keys has gone. Great. So I could then actually, that's a published application on the test farm, and I know I only did it for uh, one application but, but in the past I've just actually dragged and dropped them all across how useful is that now uh, just one proviso there if you're going from an earlier version say Citrix uh, version 4 and before some of the command line um, the command line parameters change because they then force you to add the I think it was the ampersand and the two asterisks oh dear not very good at that. Let me just go back to my one of my. Let's go to an office application. Let's just look at Word. Just show you what I mean. In the old version, uh, you didn't need to put the double quotes around the percentage and then the two stars and then the percentage. Okay. Now, if you don't do that, it means that you can't then launch um, a document and it automatically go into Word. It's kind of a security uh, setting but obviously that doesn't come across on using a utility like M Mobius so you, you then have to add those so that is a bit of a pain but generally speaking what a time saver so you, I mean I've got, a, I've got about a hundred uh, published applications in my Mickey Mouse farm so in a proper farm you're gonna have you know 300 let's say and you can all do, you can do that um, almost in one fell swoop so yeah
good good for Jason. That still technically is a beater, but uh, it's good enough for me. So I've uh, done the change farm for all three servers. As you can see, they're sitting in the test farm. Now I could just simply move on, but this is a great time just to show you what would happen on a migration. Now something I haven't mentioned is that none of those servers have any published applications, so they were removed. Uh, you need to remember that, and normally a tool like App Edit or one of the tools from Citrix Tools, which I'm just about to show you one of his uh, Pierre Marmignon's tools in a moment. And what you'll find is, let's just go to the, um, I won't go to the zones right at the moment. Let's just, yes I will, let's just do it in the order that I come across it. Let's just go to my test box and open up the advanced configuration. We'll just do a properties of the farm and look at our zones. So let's rename the zone. I'm going to call it uh, test. Should I call it test? Test zone. And at the moment, that is the preferred data collector. Now, that's the one that's going to go up and down all the time. So I'm not sure I want that to be the data collector, but the others, the others are less likely to be up. So it's always going to be. We'll just go in there. We'll just set the election preference at the moment. It's set to most preferred. That's fine. And packager is probably going to be up most of the time. I think I'm going to set that one to be most preferred. This one to be default preference. And the profile, I don't always have that powered on. So I'm going to say that's not preferred. So I'll try to use as many of the. Um, there's a couple of things here. Um, if you're still using Program Neighborhood, which of course is uh, deprecated now and you won't see it in the new versions. Uh, you can still use Program Neighborhood because there is an ICA file creator, but um, yeah, I may do a fast track one day on that because that's uh, reasonably interesting if you've got some legacy uh, uh, shortcuts through Program Neighborhood. Okay, so those zones are correct. Uh, now the next thing I would look at, you can see that because it's a new farm there are no policies. So I've got to go and enter all the policies and, and do all the filtering. So um, let's just go to, I've actually published the utility um, again from Citrix Tools. These are all free utilities and this is the policy export. Uh, I've only got three policies here. Um, let me just show you the three policies actually. Yep, there they are. And in fact, it's detected those straight away on my Zen farm. So I'm going to select all. Well, I thought I was. Perhaps I need to. It's uh, not responding to that. Why is that? Am I, am I missing something? I'm exporting them. That's probably why. Now I need to select all. Uh, obviously, need to select a file I've done it once before so I'll do that again so all the three policies um, which I've named with the uh, whatever they're filtered on so those two global policies for all the domain users and I've also got a particular one for client drive mapping uh, where I want to allow Citrix admins to be able to copy files and um, have their client drives available within the Citrix session so I need to click on proceed as you can imagine, that doesn't take very long. Uh, let me see. I don't know if I think I'll need that anymore, but I'll just minimize that. Now, obviously, you need to install this utility on all the servers. Um, it's interesting. Should I get sidetracked here? Let's just have a quick look at the install for that. Citrix tools, scripts. So. Uh, I'm actually installing the Zen App App Manager, the Zen App Fast Publishing, and there's the one I'm just using at the moment is the Zen App Policies Export Manager. So to install those, uh, so it's just looping around those with a uh, what's the switches? So it's slash passive reboot equals really suppress. So 
yeah, that's all. There's, there's a log file. Um, there's also another utility that he uses, the Citrix print driver missing, and that has a silent uh, parameter. But essentially that's a silent install for all those utilities. Um, I will place that on the website so that you can no doubt download, but obviously you can just install them manually. Um, I mean you're not going to... I'm just being a bit picky and putting them on every server, you don't need to do that. Okay, so back we are here, and let's just... I've not published it on this side, so I'll just do it off the Export Manager. He's got them all named very well. Version 1, hey, he's pretty good. So this time, of course, we're importing, and um, where have I stored them? Uh, Zenapp 5 config, yeah, that's reasonably... Uh, okay, um, obviously I want to import all the policies. And there is a little quirk here. I've actually got a very small RDP screen, and I can't actually get it. It's got no scroll bars. <laughs> so the trick for me is to click on there and then go Shift Tab one, two, three, four times, and then a space bar. <laughs> and then it imports. Okay. So uh, perhaps I just need to do a refresh. Uh, perhaps I need to do more than a refresh. Yeah! Why didn't that come up? Uh, oh, there we are. <laughs> okay, now there is... Uh, I don't know whether Pierre did that intentionally, but you can... Oh, silly. You can see that it's actually... Um, there is no filtering. So those policies have come across without the filtering. Now that may have been uh, intentional. Uh, I'd be surprised if it was. Um, so fortunately my naming convention, Citrix Admins, means that I can apply that to a group of users. Uh, let's see if we can go in and find them. Just be in my groups I imagine. If I could click properly so it would be that one. And these are just, uh, let's just make sure they haven't, yep, so there's no, uh... remember if it hasn't got a, f uh, it's not filtered on anything, uh, then nothing's going to happen. There's there's no way that's, uh, uh, show users, oops, where am I going, do, 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 users, want to use domain users, Same for the last one. So yeah, I'm not quite sure why he omitted that. Uh, it's version one, so maybe that was just uh, <laughs> a little bugette. It's just applying to everybody. Uh, I've just split the printing because I feel that's um, an important issue in Citrix, uh, separate from the other defaults. They're just sensible defaults, so they don't have to be applied, and obviously the precedence means that uh, the top priority ones uh, take precedence. Hey, nicely explained. <laughs>